we'll say last week on the show, I predicted um, the Chiefs. I, I mean, really, a, I, I said it could be a blowout. I thought it would be um, somewhere between uh, you know ten to two touchdown, maybe even more victory for the Chiefs. Um, I completely underestimated the the offensive line um, issues, what they would cause for Mahomes, as I think a lot of people did. Um, Last night, one of the more shocking Super Bowls, I think, to most people. I mean, I, I don't know what the odds were on the Chiefs not scoring a touchdown, um, but just it's weird to see this era of the Chiefs really lose any get blown out of any game like this because Mahomes had never lost a game by more than uh, one score until until last night. Um, but he it really wasn't entirely his fault. He um, or, or really much at all. Um, his his receivers weren't great. His offensive line gave him very little time um, to throw. And he, and he had a few plays where he, you know, had no time to throw and was still able to kind of sling the ball somehow and get and find a receiver and and almost uh, make completion. Um, and he was almost able to get a couple touchdowns that way. But um, it, it was really just like a, a, a shocking Super Bowl overall, I think. Um, watching the first half, I kind of kept thinking that you should turn it on, come back, they'd score a touchdown on the first drive. The second half when they got the ball, I mean, and it just never happened. So, um, really, the, the Bucks they played very well. Tom Brady um, winning MVP and deserving it, <laughs> um, especially just given his career and, and then this year. All it's not that he had anything left to prove, but the fact that he left, you know, joined a new team, um, and then won the Super Bowl in the, in his home stadium that year. It. it it's really amazing. I mean, it's something, especially, you know, given the season and the unprecedented season and everything um, that is kind of shocking that it, it happened. Um, and you know, the Bucs were able to win the Super Bowl given their, you know, the team they had in the past and then Brady coming in, bringing Gronk his first season. Um, really just, just all around amazing job um, by the Bucs. And, Brady, the thing is, even if the Chiefs, you know, had a healthy offensive line or, and everything and the Chiefs were playing well and they're playing as they normally do, Brady, you know, played well enough last night. I mean, his receivers made plenty of great plays. The defense played very well that um, I think the Bucks had a chance to win even against a, you know, a healthy Chiefs team. Um, I mean, they just they, – they, they went up big early. You know, they're 21-6 to six at halftime. Um, and they got, you know, a few touchdowns, three touchdowns in the first half. Um, Brady throwing three touchdowns, without, not throwing a single pick. Mahomes throwing two picks. Um, I mean, Brady only had threw for 200 yards, but, you know, that's all he needed. 31 points is, is good enough to win you most games. Um, like most teams, if you can put out 31 points, you, know, you, you did it. Um, so Brady, I mean, going 21 of 29. Uh, for 201 yards, three touchdowns, you know, um, sacked only once. He Brady played you know well enough. Leonard Fournette was fantastic, um, and and he's a player that I think a lot of people were saying if the Bucks were going to win, if the Bucks were really going to stay in the game, as some people who like myself would thought um, it might be uh, were saying, um, it would it would kind of be Leonard Fournette, like Leonard Fournette. Especially Ronald Jones is on one of the Bucks' few, you know, misplays at the game uh, when they they ran the ball. Ronald Jones probably should have um, used Leonard Fournette on the goal line on fourth down, fourth and goal on the goal line early in the game. Um, Leonard Fournette was he was great the whole game. He had eighty nine yards and a touchdown, twenty seven yard run. Um, and Ronald Jones, you know, was not as good, but he was. I mean, adding on top of that, they they had two, you know, very very good rushers yesterday. Whereas the Chiefs kind of had one in uh, Edward Tiller and Mahomes was pretty good rushing in the first half. He ran for 33 yards, um, threw for 270, but it was, you know, he, his rushing in the first half was was significantly better than passing because uh, his receivers he couldn't find his receivers, didn't have much time to, to throw to find them. They weren't, you know, catching everything that was coming their way. Um, but Mahomes in the, in the first half was actually rushing a lot. Um, but if you look, at, you look at Tampa Bay's receiving, I mean, who who would have, Gronk is is not like he as good as he is his, um, in his career, and as well as he's played you know, throughout his career and and become he'd become a legend, and everything. He you know is not one of their top receivers this year. If you consider Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, 
Um, Fournette got uh, gets a bunch of passes on his way. Antonio Brown really got him, you know, midway through the year. Cameron Bray, like Gronkowski's in there, but he's, he's certainly not, you know, one, two, or even three. So um, Gronk last night catching two touchdowns on. I mean, he only had you know seven targets, but that led the way for Tampa. I mean, he's that's what Brady's comfortable with. It's what he's won touchdowns, what one uh, Super Bowl is doing in the past. Did it again, you know. Uh, two touchdowns, 67 yards for, for Rob Gronkowski. So spectacular job um, by Gronk. He came through when they needed him to. Um, and, and both those touchdowns were, were just huge in getting, getting the Bucs the huge lead that, you know, helped them not need to score in um, the second half really at all, but especially in the fourth quarter. They, they didn't really try to score and they didn't need to. They just need to kill clock. So um, great job. I mean, just all the way around by Tampa Bay, very impressive. Um, and, and as I spoke about their defense a little bit before, um, on their, their defense, I mean, they, they were tackling guys as soon as they got the ball. They were breaking up passes. They were not allowing many yards after, you know, they, they, the Chiefs were never able to get anything going, passing or rushing. Um, <clears throat> and Devin White, 12 tackles, far more than anyone in Kansas City. I mean, they, they, the uh, Bucks had three other guys with six tackles. They were just, they were all, all over the place. I mean, so many of them. Um, and the, the the Chiefs really, they just couldn't get anything going. It was so shocking. I mean, even if they were going to lose, it's not like it was, you know, one of the biggest upsets ever or anything. If they were going to lose, it's just crazy to me. You know, they, they were never able to get a touchdown. They could be so good so long throughout the year, um, so productive on offense. With all these weapons, you know, Travis Kelsey and someone who has I, – I, said last week I thought he had a, a good chance to win MVP. Um, I thought it was a good pick for MVP was Travis Kelsey. Um, holding him to, you know, what they did in, in the first half. He, he, Travis Kelsey had a lot of good catches in the, in the second half. Um, Mahomes would kind of scramble around, and that's more some of the very few moments where Kansas City offense actually did look really good. Um, he would kind of scramble around, and he's found Travis Kelsey for um, multiple 15-20 uh, yard completions and Kelsey averaged 14 yards in his completions um, had, had one 33 yard pass as, as uh, Mahomes had scrummed out of the pocket and connected on third down um, and he and Travis Kelsey ended up with 10 receptions but you know, obviously nothing in the end zone or nothing nothing that was too um, too much of an issue for the Tampa Bay defense but Tyree Kill um, I thought he would have easily 100 yards and he, he finished in the game with 73 um, I mean <sighs> Guys like Tyreek Hill, you're expecting to kind of juke around and get 10, 12 yards after the catch on um, many occasions, and, and he just wasn't able to. I mean, the Tampa Bay secondary um, just able to completely shut him down. Um, the you know the Carlton Davis, Sean Murphy bunting, um, and Antoine, Antoine Winfield, who got that taunting penalty in the fourth quarter for kind of giving him the peace sign, they, that they were all able to just shut down Tyreek Hill. That was what the damn big defense seemed to focus on. Um, and that's what they that, that, that's really they were able to execute that game plan very well. Um, I think if there's a few things we can learn from the Super Bowl, <coughs> excuse me, um, I think there are a few things we can learn from the Super Bowl. Um, it's not entirely about the quarterback in some some situations, in others, it is. Um, um Obviously, referring to Kansas City in the first case, whereas Mahomes, as good as he is, it's, you know, it's not like anyone's going to say he, he's been a fluke the whole time, and this is, you know, truly him. He's terrible. You know, still won a Super Bowl last year. Still, he's going to be very good. Um, one of, if not the best, quarterbacks next year. So, um, despite that, you know, losing Eric Fisher, um, an offensive line, left tackle, you know, a couple of the guys in experience, plus they need, you know, their receivers to, to play well. Um, is it's, it's not all Mahomes, you know. You can't blame Mahomes for this. You can blame him partially, of course. <coughs> but um, you need more than a quarterback. In the other circumstance, obviously, Tom Brady. It is all about the quarterback. The, the Buccaneers hadn't won a playoff game since the 2002 Super Bowl, which they had won um, until this year. So Brady takes that franchise <coughs> and and is able to bring them to the Super Bowl in in their home stadium in his first season and win it over a team that was 
he- not not heavily favored in terms of points, but I I knew very pe- little, very few people personally that the Bucks were going to win. Like maybe two who who were very confident, and, uh, serious confidence that the Bucks uh, would win the game. I think probably two people like that. Whereas I, you know, probably twenty or thirty people who were pretty confident the Chiefs would win the game. And most in most cases, they'd say they'd cover too. Um, the three point spread, but um. That, that just shows, you know, how much the quarterback changes everything for the Bucs. 18 years, hadn't won a playoff game. Um, and they hadn't, they hadn't made it very often either. The, the Bucs really just – and even in the regular season, it took Brady a little while to settle in, of course, and, and the Bucs um, – <coughs> the Bucs had a bit of a tough stretch at one point. Um, they got swept by the Saints in the regular season. Obviously, they won, they won when it – when it counted um, in the playoffs, they beat them in in Orleans, but you know they got blown out at home on national TV by the Saints. Um, lost to the Bears, who they were certainly much better than. And of course, um, in something that uh, um, you rarely see, um, a, a Super Bowl game that was a um, a regular season game that year, um, Kansas City and Tampa Bay playing in Kansas City, or in, in Tampa Bay and Kansas City winning. So I think, I think especially that, not, not only people were just confident Kansas City was a better team, I think one reason that a lot of people were picking them was uh, because, you know, we really have regular season games to look back on between Super Bowl teams when previewing the game. And in this circumstance, we did. Um, week 12, Kansas City and Tampa Bay and Kansas City was absolutely a better team. But, you know, Tampa Bay didn't look terrible in that game, lost by three points. But I think I remember watching that game. It was a week after um, another tough loss that the, the Bucks had in, in this stretch where they lose three or four um, to New Orleans, LA, and Kansas City. They, they lost to the Rams at home on Monday Night Football. So, you know, this is a tough stretch for Tampa Bay, but once Brady completely settled in, they, you know, won the last four games of <coughs> the regular season. Um, even another thing, there's another hurdle for, for Brady, I remember, was. Um, the the bye weeks often in the week twelve um, and in week thirteen this year the Bucks had a had a week thirteen bye so they have a forty three year old quarterback who was in um, twelve games into the season I mean he hasn't had a bye I mean really uh, team players t- obviously have no say in when their buys are and you know you take what you get but most players um, obviously don't want it very early week four and don't want it too late like this this is late I mean then. You're just giving grueling football 12 straight games, typically a preseason. You, know, you didn't have that this year. Um, but 12 straight games for the bye would be tough on, on pretty much any football player. They wouldn't, they would not like that. They, they're usually bring it sometime a week between week six and week 10. Um, certainly not, certainly not later than that um, or, or earlier than that. Um, and Brady getting through that. And then after that bye week, hadn't lost a game. Hasn't, uh, after that bye week, in uh, week 13, and coming off three three losses in four games, a loss to the defending Super Bowl champion at that point, Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and then after that, winning very easily against the, the Vikings, um, winning in Atlanta, absolutely one of the biggest blowouts of the year, 47-7 to seven at Detroit, you know, beating Atlanta again. Um, and then the four playoff wins, three of those on the road, three of those also, um, three of those on the road. Two of those on the road and against all-time historic, legendary Hall of Fame quarterbacks. One of them in the Super Bowl against another quarterback who is a legend of his generation. Um, so the Bucks looking at eight straight wins at this point. It's not so not so often after Super Bowl you can say um, one team, the Bucks, their last loss was to the Chiefs. The other team, the Chiefs' last loss was to the Bucks. Um, you know, obviously, the Chiefs' last loss last night. And the Bucks last lost on uh, November 29th against Kansas City at home. So I guess uh, they played two games against each other at Raymond James Stadium this year and split them essentially. So um, Tom Brady, I mean, he's he's already he had already cemented himself as the goat, as the you know the six-time Super Bowl champion, and. Regardless, people, so, you know, if anybody hated on him, they would only cite, you know, he can't win without Brady, without a Belichick, he's system quarterback. And I mean, that's gone now. That doesn't exist. He leaves, it's hard for anything. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, 
you know, who just won MVP, probably couldn't leave the Packers this year, just go to a random team who has, has been a pretty bad franchise and win the Super Bowl. If Aaron Rodgers, you know, went to Houston this year, Washington, or some other, or Cincinnati or something, like some, some franchise that's been pretty down, you know, hasn't, hasn't been good in a while, really, if ever. Um, he probably couldn't win the Super Bowl his first year. It's just, it doesn't, it's, it's very hard for you to do that for anyone. For, for a 43 year old Tom Brady, um, who has been in the same system, the same head coach his whole life, it, it is really amazing. Um, so, uh, other, other than that, um, you know, moving forward, uh, the, uh, I guess the, the, the big, for Tom Brady's future, I mean, there are those who say he, you know, he could resign now. He has nothing left to prove. He has won, he won it all with New England, won it with a new team in his first year's home stadium with one of his, you know, best receivers he's ever had, um, coming back with him in Gronk. I mean, you could kind of just say he's rides off to the sunset at this point and his career would be over. Um, I think there's very little chance of that. Um, and one re- there's one, one situation that I think he could retire. Because it's not out of the question. I mean, he's 40, there's no 43-year-old who was out of the question they retire. Um, but that would be if Drew Brees comes back. Um, so Drew Brees took a salary reduction um, by, from the Saints, which is kind of a bit of a sign that uh, he's probably going to retire, um, most likely. And, and, you know, that Drew Brees, Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champion, gets great. Drew Brees, you know, if he wants to retire, this, if you feel like this is time for that, then great. But if he doesn't, um, if he doesn't, I think there's zero chance Tom Brady retires. I think Tom Brady is not going to let Brees stop playing before him. Because, or, sorry, not is not going to, to stop playing before Brees um, because – Brady is, is too much of a competitor to let Brady have any of these records. I mean, he's just, he has this drive that most people don't have. So um, the passing yards record uh, specifically, um, he breathes is the all time NFL playoff leader with over 300 passing yards a game. Um, and, and Tom Brady, you know, obviously holds most playoff quarterback stats since he, he, he holds most playoff quarterback records. Um, I mean, you look at Tom Brady, he's been in the league for 20 years, um, but only one year in the NFC, and he has just as many NFC championship victories as Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers. So having more playoff wins is also um, a lot of franchises as well. Um, Brees is also, also the all-time leader in passing yards. I remember that game. That um, he set the record for all-time passing touchdowns very well in a football game against the Washington Redskins, and I, I'm, I'm a Redskins fan, so I remember watching that game. You know, Breeze kind of solidifying, solidifying himself as one of the best um, quarterbacks ever in that game. So Breeze holds the all-time record in passing yards at 80,358 right now, and completions for 7,142. Brady second in both of those. Um, Brady about uh, 1,100 or so yards behind Breeze. Um, and about 400 completions behind. So uh, Breeze holds a you know pretty steady uh, lead there. But if Breeze retires, you know Brady just because of the way he is, his competitive edge, he, he's going to want to come back for sure. Um, and and just break those records. <laughs> you know, see if they can get a um, couple hundred more. You know, completions. Um, and passing yards, you know, about a thousand more passing yards. Um, the, 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 see, yeah, the passing type, the lead for passing touchdowns, um, right now is Brady at 581, Breeze 571. Um, or, or sorry, that record that I was talking about that Breeze hit against the Redskins a few years ago was, um, most uh, consecutive games with a touchdown. Uh, but right now they're, they're very close for, the leading career passing touchdowns. I mean, that's three three of the all time uh, records in in football for, for quarterbacks. Held Breeze one, Brady two, or Brady one, Breeze two between passing yards, completions, and career passing touchdowns. Um, so Brady has five, Brady one, Bruce has seven, Breeze has seventy one, as I said. Um, and then 
I mean, that's especially with Drew Brees, but for, for any good quarterback, especially Drew Brees, that is pretty much a lock um, that Brees, Brees would get. If Brady were to retire, as I said, I don't think he will, but if he were to, um, Brees would get 11 passing touchdowns next year. So Brees was hold, would hold all three records over Brady, um, passing yards, completions, and um, passing touchdowns. So um, I, I don't think if Brees comes back, Brady retires. I don't really think Brady retires anyway, but if Breeze does retire, they, you know, there's a chance. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, Tom, Tom Brady, I mean, just, he's the, he's the greatest champion of his generation in sports and possibly of all time. I mean, you know, he's only won seven um, Super Bowls. And I say only just because in the context of all time, you know, we're talking Bill Russell, the 11 NBA championships, um, Henry Richard, 11 Stanley Cup rings uh, with the Habs. I mean, so, you know, in that context, it's only seven, but those guys were not playing in the leagues that in the league Tom Brady is in right now, where he's playing against, playing, first of all, in the NFL, very different sport. Um, and playing, you know, versus 31 other teams, for example. I mean, Henry Richard playing um, in the original six era and then in the um, first expansion. I mean, there's 12 teams in the league at, at most in his career. And then you look at um, uh, Bill Russell. I mean, Bill Russell, you know, certainly one of the greatest champions ever, but um, he's he, he played in the, the, the 50s, I believe. Um, and they're, they're not, you know, there's not the style, the, uh, the level of play where you, where you could where you had to be at the level Tom Brady is at. Yeah, he played 56 to 69. So um, the NBA did did not have this many, this much competition um, um, that the NFL has now. 31 teams and, every, and the competition is so high, especially when you're playing against teams like the Saints twice a year um, and the schedule the Bucs had this year. But you know, let's see, the, the, whole, the whole NBA that Bill Russell played had – Teams in Boston, Syracuse, Philadelphia, New York, St. Louis, Minneapolis, Fort Wayne, Rochester. So many of those teams were not good and ended up folding anyway, but there's only eight teams in the league. So he won 11 championships when you're on a team as legendary as the Celtics when you're playing against teams from Fort Wayne and, and whatnot. So um, I just think that's why Brady's seven championships more impressive than Bill Russell's 11, um, Maurice Richard's 11 as well. Um, oh, yeah. No, uh, Maurice Richard. Or sorry, not, not Maurice Richard, uh, Henry Richard. Um, Henry Richard, you know, playing his whole career, as I said, for about t- the majority of it, really 13 years of it in the original six era. So it's a six-team league, and similar to Bill Russell's playing on, you know, the Celtics, Henry Richard playing with many of the other great players of all time in the NHL, playing with um, Montreal in a six-team league. And, you know, things like the Rangers were terrible that whole time, Chicago, um, Detroit wasn't very good. It was really just like kind of a three-team league. Um, so that, that he was able to win 11 is amazing and all, but um, I don't think it's as impressive as seven for Tom Brady in the 21st century, all seven rings in the 21st century. You know, and, and I saw something the other day about um, the draft. Tom Brady, um, of course, drafted 199th overall in the 2000 NFL draft. It was also drafted five years earlier in the MLB draft, but – well, I digress. Um, but so Tom Brady drafted 199th overall in the NFL draft. And of that draft, only three players um, were in the league after 2010, which is really, I mean, <laughs> that that just shows, and that's just incredible. That obviously, you know, Tom Brady, last, the best player from the draft, clearly, you know, the last player from the draft, clearly, but. For, the, for there to be no players playing past 2010 is really just amazing. And Brady won, I think, four Super Bowls since everyone else in his draft has retired. Chad Pennington, the last one for the 2000 draft um, to retire, playing through the 2010 season. Chad Pennington, I mean, he was a fairly good quarterback for the Jets, but he was, you know, I'm sure, sizzled out after about 10 years. It's a great career, 10-year career on the NFL career. Is the, the average NFL career is um, I think under four years for sure, um, possibly right, right around three maybe. Um, but 
Tom Brady. I mean, I playing longer career than kickers, punters, even like no one in his own draft class playing past 2010. Um, yeah, so I just think he it's so impressive, and then he he is the greatest champion that we've ever seen in, in you know North American sport team sports, um, at least. And you know, uh, LeBron James right now would be would be um, a comparison as he's won, I think, four. Um, so he's not not quite at Brady's level. And the NBA is such a different league too. But you, you will hear people compare, you know, a Tom Brady to a, to a LeBron James. I just think it's it's so different. It's incomparable. Um, and the only reason that I do that for these other areas of other sports, so with Henry Richard, with Bill Russell, is because they have the most rings. Um, ever so that's just that's kind of what like logically you said who's the greatest champion you know, the, the most championships is bill russell and Henry shard um but tom brady just also just being able to lead these teams he, I mean, he's got the same number i think it's uh he's a basketball player who has seven rings seven championships in the uh most of them are in the 21st century i think you know robert horry who won um, a bunch of uh, championships with the spurs and lakers um but Brady just leading his team and going to in, in a sport like football, he needs to learn a completely new offense when he came to his first year in Tampa. Um, you know, he's, he's the best, the best champion of all time, given um, the context of the time in which he played, who he's playing against, um, et cetera. But, um, you know, if we look at, you know, some expert picks, um, it wasn't, you know, just me, not that I'm really an NFL expert, uh, or like a you know, media members or anything, or um, those who cover the league. But just looking at experts, you know, John Clayton predicted a Chiefs victory. Uh, Neil Greenberg, Bill Barnwell with ESPN. You know, every single person on here, I'm looking at a list of all the expert picks, about 30 expert picks from all over different um, social media or different uh, me different media members. Um, so I, I see, you know, two people, John Butcher Gross and Jenna Lane from ESPN who had even picked the Bucks, or Mike, Mike Florio and uh, Steve Smith Sr. as well, all of them picking a, uh, a Bucks victory by either three or four points, all of them, you know, 35, 31, 31, 27, or sorry, 35, 31, 30, 27, um, 29, 27, 26, 23, one person, two points, the rest of them, three or four. And, you know, if you're going to pick the Bucks, it had to be close because nobody thought it could be more of a blowout. 31 to nine and winning, winning by 22 points. And it felt like way more than that. That seems way closer than it was. And it could, it could have really been much closer if the chiefs, the East went forward the one they had, um, you know, first, first and goal and didn't end up scoring touchdown. Um, and Mahomes had gotten sacked on the drive. So they got pushed back on beyond the 10, but the, the chiefs didn't score a couple of times there. If they could have, you know, it was, there were times it was 31 to nine, the Bucks just trying to kill clock. And the Chiefs could have gotten two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. They, they, that would not have been crazy. And then it would have been, you know, 31-23. Um, and that, that was the score of the Bucs game against Washington, much closer seeming. You know, the Bucs, they just blew them out just because they didn't need to try or just even need to score in the last 20 minutes of the game. So, or even in the second half, but they really didn't try in the last 20 minutes of the game. So um, that's why I just – you're, you don't even see anybody who's even close to the correct score. You, know, you can look through hundreds of extra picks. Um, nobody, nobody was because the idea that the Chiefs just fall flat, wouldn't score a touchdown. Um, you know, Mahomes wasn't good enough to make up for the loss of a number one overall pick, left tackle. Well, you know, guarding his blind side, um, Eric Fisher, number one overall pick a few years ago. And people don't, you know, linemen aren't flashy, so. Um, I mean, linemen are flashy. So Eric Fischel, despite despite being as good as he is, you know, one of the best offensive tackles uh, in football since he was picked first overall seven years ago. Um, you know, being him being placed in injury reserve, people thought Mahomes is good enough. You know, he can still take over a game. He can still find Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey, who will they'll get you know two hundred yards and a couple touchdowns. I think mean, he'll be great. I mean, and Mahomes, nobody nobody considered that. Not only could he not do that for the whole game and win. He couldn't even get a touchdown doing that, and and he had a few good chances, and it wasn't entirely his fault. But like, that's I just having. It's very rare to see Super Bowl where you don't even have anyone close to the score. Um, like if you look at the Patriots, here you know, they went sixteen and zero, and they you know were aiming for that nineteen and zero perfect season. 
Um, they that Super Bowl against the Giants, they lost seventeen to fourteen. Remember that game very well. Um, they they were winning fourteen to ten. Then you know I mean, and they led the Giants on that legendary drive um, when he found David Tyree. Um, and that Super Bowl, anybody who picked the Giants would have picked them 17, 14 times right. You know, three point game, um, short one of the Giants. And, and you're, you're always going to get people picking the other in the Super Bowl um, just because, you know, both teams are at the minimum, no matter how much better one is than the other, both teams are hot, one, three straight. And if it's a wild track team like the Bucks or like the Giants, where they've won at least two of those um, on the road. And in this, in this case, the Bucks winning all three at Washington, at, at New Orleans, at Green Bay. Um, so you're going to have people picking the bucks, but just in a blowout. I mean, that, that that's the, that's the part that you know, I was disappointed about because at the middle, I just want a good game, you know, and a couple years ago um, when um, it was Rams, Pats, Rams, Patriots, Super Bowl 53. Um, that was my sophomore year of college. I remember a couple years ago, and that was a 13 to three game and Jared Goff was awful. Terrible, couldn't get anything going to the Rams. Boring game. I mean, and I and I wanted the Rams to win. I didn't care that much, but I, I preferred if the Rams had won. Um, and they couldn't get anything going. It was just a boring game. But if they had lost, you know, thirty-eight to thirty-five, or even a low-scoring game, is fine. You know, a a fourteen ten game, whatever, something exciting where it's close and and there's some you know a couple good plays at least. That the Rams were terrible that game, and there was nothing exciting. That's what the Chiefs were. I mean. If you, you look at some of the, this is a 31 9 game. Um, it reminds me of a score of a uh, Super Bowl, um, I believe it was 1980. 19. Um, yeah, who's the, the, the Raiders um, and the Redskins? In, uh, yeah, the LA Raiders and the Redskins in, in the 1984 Super Bowl. Um, 38 to nine reminds me of that. Not that I remember that game, obviously, it was way before I was born, or I'm not that I've ever seen it either. Um, but the Redskins were favored that Super Bowl by three points. So, this is that's you know a very good comparison. Um, in in you know, in this Super Bowl, um, it was Super Bowl, um, 1984. So, that was uh, Super Bowl 17. Yeah, Super Bowl 17, um, Redskins Raiders, Redskins favored by three points. That one actually also played in Tampa Bay, that Super Bowl, so a lot in common. And the Raiders absolutely blowing them out, 38-9 to in Super Bowl. Um, that's pretty much what the Bucks did. The Bucks, three-point underdogs, huge blowout in the Super Bowl. Um, and if you look at some of some other you know, blowouts in Super Bowl history, the, if you do uh, Super Bowl 20, the Bears beating the, the Patriots, 46 to 10, but the Bears were heavy favorites in that game. Um, so, you know, if, if the Chiefs had won yesterday, 31 to 9, that would have been shocking for sure. You know, nobody would have thought the Bucs, they can't score a touchdown, that Tom Brady, with all his experience and all his Super Bowls, um, wouldn't be able to get anything going. But it would have obviously been, oh, you know, the Chiefs are the Chiefs are dominant. They, you know, Kelsey and Edwards Hilaire and Mahomes and, and, and Hill, like, you know, you kind of get it. But when it's the underdog, when, you know, um, See, there's one other one, you know, you know, the blowout in the Super Bowl. Cowboys beat the Dolphins 24 to 3 in Super Bowl 6, but the Cowboys were heavy favorites in that game. Um, so it's just that that's the crazy part. You know, it's we've only seen two Super Bowls ever like this. This one and uh Super Bowl 17 Redskins Raiders when the Raiders um three point underdogs absolutely blew out um the Redskins. And now you, you don't see that. So you really don't see that much. Um, let's see. Uh, another one, yeah, Giants Giants beating the Broncos in Super Bowl 21, 39 to 20, but the Giants were heavy favorites there too. Um, so it's really, it's only happened twice. And this is just one, it's just so surprising, even though even though the guy who's won more Super Bowls than anyone ever has played in about 15% of Super Bowls. And has won has won a higher percentage of Super Bowls than you know like I saw a stat on Twitter has won a higher um, Tom Brady's won a higher percentage of the Super Bowls th- what was it um, than uh, some than this century than um, 
then LeBron James is free throw percentage for the best like few games or something. Like it's more like a Brady would win a Super Bowl this century than LeBron James would make a free throw for the last few games or something, something like that. <coughs> um, that's why you know it, it would be just as shocking. It would be very shocking if if the Bucks had lost by this score. But really, just amazing that um, the underdog an underdog is able to get a win like this. Um, um, but you know, other than Tom Brady, um, kind of move, moving on the, the, the chiefs going forward, the chiefs obviously had distractions, you know, their, their linebackers coach, Britt Reed, um, <coughs> son of their head coach, Andy Reed, you know, car crash a few days ago, um, un, unclear the circumstances and, you know, they say he, he might have, um, he might be arrested, might've been a DUI or something. Um, not sure, but. He was in a car crash. You know, his his daughter Andy Reid, the head coach, is a um, granddaughter. You know, was in the hospital for a while, um, and and she's still in critical condition. So a lot of distractions. Obviously, you know, there's typical stuff: COVID and and the injuries. Um, understand that. So that just we we, didn't, we we as a as fans didn't really weigh how much that would um, affect the Chiefs. Kind of really saw like, oh, they they learned to block everything out. Um, but if, if, if we can just look back, um, review this season, I guess, um, you know, what January, December, October, something. yeah, four and a half months ago, so you'd said, well, you know, you wonder what's the, what's the season going to look like? Um, and nobody, nobody really knew what to expect, you know? Are, are, is COVID going to get significantly worse? Everyone's going to get it. We're going to cancel the season. Like, is this going to be the year, you know, some team is playing well and then just gets COVID and, you know, everything's ruined or they 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 can't finish the season or whatnot. You know, what if there was the way they canceled the season week 11 and then you have the 11 and Steelers um, not able to finish? Like, there's just so many questions and the fact that the NFL got through the season um, with, of course, some delays and some game time changes and, and many, many players getting COVID-19 testing positive. Um, so they, they were able to get through the season um, completely, play the Super Bowl, you know, have every game played and and no players with any uh, lasting, you know, issues in COVID or anything so far. Everything has been taken care of. And, and fans, it's not circumstances, you know. I think it was like, like 100,000 fans were able to go to NFL games this year. Um, you know, many teams are having any, but there's some teams that had, you know, seven, 8,000 fans um, for pretty much all their home games. Uh, and then in the Super Bowl, getting on uh, the medical personnel there throughout the playoffs. So uh, that the NFL was able to do that was really amazing. Um, and it's as much as people dislike Roger Goodell, not that it was necessarily all on him, but um, – it's, it is a huge success for, for the NFL and just, just for the league um, in general. Um, also yesterday, the Super Bowl was something that um, was, I guess, not talked about much just because it was the Super Bowl, um, but they had the Hall of Fame class honored um, at, at the Super Bowl yesterday. Um, and two, two huge names from this past generation of football in this Hall of Fame class um, Someone who, you know, the only the only guy who won Super Bowls with two different teams until last night, <laughs> um, Peyton Manning. Of course, of course, winning the Super Bowl uh, with Indianapolis and and then with Denver um, in the last year of his career, uh, Peyton Manning, who some say is the greatest quarterback ever. I, w- I would never say that. I would I would disagree. But um, I like, everyone likes Peyton Manning really, and um, one of the best passers of all time. He gets not he gets inducted into the Super Bowl. Um, um, and uh, they'll be inducted this August in Canton, um, with along with net, with with last season's twenty member class. So we're gonna have forty guys. That's you know kind of crazy. Um, um, the, you know twenty guys from last year, um, along with let's see the Hall of Fame class: um, offensive lineman Alan Fineka, um defensive back John Lynch, defensive back Charles Woodson. Um, a, a, what they call a contributor and a non-player, um, a wide receiver, Drew Pearson, who played in the 70s and 80s, um, who he is, uh, I guess, known, known for. It's not like it's you know, necessarily invented. Um, 
but it was it was you know the pass that Roger Staubach made and calling it the Hail Mary um, is just a, you know it's really a religious term. But then he had, that's what he decided to call it because it was caught. Um, Drew Pearson catching the first ever Hail Mary um, from Roger Staubach, um, and he and he won Super Bowl seven NFL championships. Um, or seven seven Super NFL championship appearances, um, you know NFC titles all over the place. So he he him getting inducted finally in the uh, like the senior induction since he, he played so much earlier. Um, then a few coaches and Tom Flores, um, a few guys who were surprisingly missed the cut this year. Jared Allen, defensive end and defensive back, Randy Barber, um, you know, Randy Barber and and Jared Allen, two very feared, um, well-known defensive players of the the the, the first decade to decade and a half of the uh, 21st century. Um, so I think they have a shot in the future for sure. It's not over for them, but also the two biggest, but for sure the two biggest names in all famous here, Peyton Manning, as I said, and Megatron, an eight year career. <coughs> eight year career. And a Hall of Fame career. Nobody's just arguing against it. It's just such a short career. Look at these guys. Manny played 17 years. Lynch played 14. Woodson played 17. Um, let's see. Yeah, Rondé Rondé Barber played 15 years. Jared Allen played, well, you know, 10 years, but or, sorry, 11 years, um, or no, 12. Sorry, so he played 12 years, so even still much more. Um, Calvin Johnson, six-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, and a member of what the NFL called their uh, their All 2000s team. Calvin Johnson, despite not making his debut in 2007, made the, the All-Star team for the first decade of the century. So um, Calvin Johnson and Peyton Manning, two of the greatest to ever play, uh, both inducted in this uh, Hall of Fame class. Those are those are my two favorites here for sure, just because they're the two I remember playing the most. Um, both played pretty much the whole careers in my memory. Um, well, Manning played 98 to 15, but um, so I don't remember. I don't remember the first probably 10 years of his career. Probably like seven, probably seven years. I remember both the Super Bowls very well. Um, when he beat the Bears, beat Rex Grossman, I remember that. And then of course with the Broncos. But um, Calvin Johnson, um, an eight-year career, playing as possibly, arguably the greatest wide receiver ever. I, I wouldn't argue that, but that's not crazy. Um, most skilled at least. But playing for such a t- terrible franchise in Detroit. Detroit now, possibly, like arguably, has the greatest running back and greatest wide receivers of all time. Has never made a Super Bowl. I just defies logic and, um, and had a great quarterback. I mean, Matthew Stafford, teams, teams want to have quarterbacks like that. That's the only reason they were able to get a trade for him. Um, and then they get rid of him. And now they have Jared Goff. And so the Lions are, you know, stuck probably going to go like five and 11 again. And uh, we'll see how Stafford does with an actual really good team in Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, it's the, uh, the NFL's uh, 2021 Hall of Fame class. Um, and, the Hall of Fame class will be um, honored, you know, this is August for the Hall of Fame claim for the for the Hall of Fame game, um, <clears throat> um, along with the member of the uh, along with the uh, members of the 2020 Hall of Fame class, you know, Troy Palomalu, Edgar and James, Isaac Bruce, um, some huge huge names from that group. So within you know that the, that weekend uh, in in August. Um, you're going to have 2020 and 2021 Hall of Fame inductions, Calvin Johnson, Peyton Manning, you know, Troy, uh, Troy Palomalu, guys, you know, Edgar and James, uh, Bill Cower, Jimmy Johnson, um, you know, really you know, Donnie Schell, um, Max Sprink, Max Speedy, Eddie Sprinkle. Like you have a lot of uh, huge names. This is going to be um, probably one of the most popular Hall of Fame induction years um, ever in NFL history. And it'll be the first one in two years. Um, of course, you know, every sport's having to do that. Uh, baseball's doing that as well. So um, it's, it's going to be a special one for sure. <clears throat> but uh, just kind of trying to recap uh, everything else that went on this year. Just it, it was, I mean, there are, you know, officiating changes, and team, team name changes. You know, Redskins became the Washington football team and the Raiders. Beginning relocated, relocated to Vegas in this beautiful new stadium. Still haven't had any fans. Haven't been able to have any fans the whole season. Um, you know, having to suspend all the international games. Um, many teams playing with no fans at all. I mean, the the Redskins or Washington Football Team. You know, local to me, uh, played one game with, with two thousand fans. They played two thousand fans the whole year. They played that one game against against New York, um, which they lost. Uh, 
um, that it's uh, getting swept by the Giants. Um, uh, that that game in front of a couple thousand fans, and then none, none others. And most teams didn't play in front of any fans. And then you had teams like uh, Dallas, who had you know twenty five thousand on Thanksgiving, but that's still not not even half the stadium. So, um, also of course having you know a bunch of players opt out, um, but that's that's their right. The ones that played uh, took the risk, and and in many cases, I'm sure they they happy they are. They're happy they did. Um, uh, so. You know, if we're looking at next year, um, the, the way too early predictions, um, I, I think it was a great trade for for San, Los Angeles. For Los Angeles. Um, and then Matthew Stafford deal. You know, they gave up a lot of picks and, and they gave up Goff, who, who is good. He's you know not Matthew Stafford, I don't think. And I think you can't say a team would lose a trade if they win a Super Bowl, right? Um, and this happened in, in baseball. For those who follow baseball, you know, Adam Eaton went to the, the Nationals. Or, uh, four players. One of them is already way better than Neaton is and has been, and two others are still very good. So it seems like a very lopsided trade, but Washington won the World Series, so the trade, you can't say it's not worth it because the only goal in sports is to win the championship. So if a team does that, you really can't get upset with how they did it at all, um, which is why I think the Rams are immediate Super Bowl contenders with Stafford, as, as they were you know, with Goff. They just made it two years ago. Um, but I think with Stafford right now, the Rams are going to the Rams have a huge shot to make the Super Bowl, and they, they completely could. And if they win Super Bowl, let's say, it doesn't matter if Detroit, if Jared Goff's amazing in Detroit and they turn those picks into a bunch of other studs, it, it, I mean, the, if a team wins the Super Bowl, that's that's it. So um, I think people are overreacting about that trade. Um, and I think that the, the Rams really won that one. Um, and as for uh, predictions for next season, um, and as a lot of it, this this the, depends on things like you know where will Deshaun Watson go, because um, Deshaun Watson, the, the Texans have reiterated that they do not want to trade him. They won't trade him. He's staying in uh, in Houston. Um, but Deshaun Watson, I mean, he wants out. Houston insists they won't trade him. But you know, D- Sam Darnold's probably going to be on a new team. Deshaun Watson, Carson Wentz. Um, Three, three, two of them will definitely be on the teams, I think. I mean, I think there's no situation Sam Darnold stays in New York or that Carson Wentz stays in Philly. Deshaun Watson, it's just up in the air. I think there's a 50-50 chance to trade him. You know, it's it's so hard to predict. Um, I mean, I would love for Washington to get him. Um, you know, Los Angeles and Detroit already have their quarterbacks. The Jets are almost definitely going to draft Palomalo. Uh, well, sorry, I was looking at a picture of Trevor Lawrence. They're uh, almost definitely going to draft um, uh, Trevor Lawrence. Um so, um, I, 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 there's, there's a few things that could get Carson Wentz or um, or uh, Deshaun Watson if if Deshaun Watson on um, you know ends up moving teams. Um, and there's a bunch of teams looking for quarterbacks this year. Um, we'll see what happens with Dak Prescott. You know, in in Dallas, um, he. <clears throat> he turned down a long term deal because he wanted to you know build up his uh. His, his value more, unfortunately for him, end up getting hurt. Um, but we'll see if Jerry Jones wants to wants to sign him to a long term deal um, uh, after this. Um, and uh, I, I think he'll stay in Dallas though. Matt Ryan could also um, switch teams. You know the Falcons were pretty bad this year. They were uh, what I had said. You know, like the best five and eleven team ever, pretty much. Um, just because they stayed in a bunch of games, they had. Had a few huge wins, and they were in so many games that they lost like heartbreakers in so many times. Um, but he could he could land in San Francisco too. You know, they're looking for a quarterback, and they 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 just made the Super Bowl last year, so they're not terrible by by any means. But their division is very hard now. Um, you know, Cam Newton's probably going to leave too out uh, of New England, um, and I think he would just get a one one year deal because he wasn't great this year. Um, not that the Pats not that the, the Pats were, um, but a team like San Francisco or Washington. Um, could get him, and, and of course, his former head coach in Carolina, Ron Vera, is the head coach in Washington. So, um, and, and, and as I said, the, the 49ers before Jimmy Garoppolo with San Francisco, he could go back to New England because they need a quarterback. And I just think there's no chance Cam Newton stays in New England, there's no chance Jimmy, Jimmy Garoppolo stays in San Francisco. So, they could switch places on uh, him going there, it's like a three way move, and then uh, Newton going to Washington. 
And then we'll see where Taylor Heineke goes. Because Taylor Heineke absolutely has earned a backup job with his play um, in the playoffs, in the game, in the game against uh, Tampa Bay. Um, so we'll see if he stays in Washington or is able to move. But Jameis Winston, um, a lot of it has to do with Drew Brees. If Drew Brees comes back, obviously Drew Brees will be starting. Um, if he doesn't, Jameis Winston, Taysom Hill, um, one of them will. And I think it would be Winston. But I think he can, he can move teams too, Philip Rivers. Um, uh, Philip Rivers <clears throat> has said that he's probably going to retire, or that, that he is going to retire. And um, I, I think there is, <laughs> if there's anyone who might come back, like a Brett Favre, it would be Philip Rivers, because he seems like he just can't stay with the ball. Um, but for now, he is, he is retired. Um, obviously, the Colts looking good in quarterback. Right now, just Jacoby Brissett. Um, I mentioned Sam Darnold. He's leaving. I can see him, you know, being tried out in a place like Indianapolis. Um, but he, I mean, San Francisco, New Orleans, even. Um, there are a lot of places he can end up. Jacksonville, um, like backing up uh, Trevor Lawrence um, in Jacksonville. Um, the Jets is an interesting one because they have that second pick. If you'll take Justin Fields, or if they're, they're going to try for like a Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, that would be interesting if Jimmy Garoppolo came back to the AFC East and is playing for the Jets. Um, but Carson Wentz, you know, Mitch Trubisky with Chicago. Um, Mitch Trubisky, you know, probably a backup. I mean, he, he just hasn't looked good. He, he, he hasn't gotten better since he left UNC. Um, other than they, they, they've made a playoffs a few times. They've drafted this year, looked terrible and lost. So not too impressive. Um, that, that happening against the Saints. But um, Daniel Jones um with the giants i think will stay in new york obviously that's who they're building around but um like the nfc east is so weird that you have a team like washington winning it is at at seven and nine every team tries to take control of it. it's so easy I mean, it's right in front of them if a team can just go on like a four-game win streak at any point they'll probably win the division i mean the giants almost did and they started the season 0 seven right so um i think daniel jones this is the, the, the he has the best chance to take over the division the Eagles don't really have a quarterback. I don't think Jalen Hurts is going to be that great for, for a whole year, but that's what they're going with. They have a new coach. You know, Washington doesn't have a quarterback. Everything is good else around it. I mean, the Reds can, or Washington football team could win seven, eight games again, eight, maybe even nine, but um, I think the Giants are the best set up because they have a quarterback who they've had for a couple of years who they've developed. Um, and, uh, and and the Cowboys also have Dak coming off an injury. So um, Trevor Lawrence ended up in, uh, in Jacksonville, you know, the Jags jumping in for that first overall pick. Um, Justin Fields, I think he, he might end up um, – him or, him or Zach Wilson ends up in New York, I think. So um, a lot of changes for next season. Very successful year this season. Super Bowl, amazing. I mean, Tom Brady doing what he does best. Um, really just amazing not, – not an amazing game in terms of, like, wow, that was well played. Just amazing that it happened, that the season was pulled off well, and then that Tom Brady – through all that, like as much as everything can change, the only thing that'll ever change is Tom Brady winning Super Bowls, because is what it seems like. You know, as much as the season, as I think you play the Super Bowl at home in front of a few fans and games get canceled and there's a pandemic and Tom Brady just wins another Super Bowl. Um, so it's really it's amazing, but it's not too unexpected, I would say. Um, but this this has been our, our last show of uh there for Wild Card. You know, been uh, doing this show for uh like seven, seven, six, seven shows now. Um, this will be the last show just because football season is obviously over. Um, coming up next week, we'll be starting a baseball show um, at this time, uh, a previewing MLB, it's a pitchers and catchers report coming up. And um, then we'll have baseball season, hopefully, because the MLB hasn't worked anything out on their side either. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a great football season. And uh, thank you to everyone for, for watching and listening. Um, NFL Wild Card been very fun um been an enjoyable year enjoyable time talking about football and i'll see you next week for uh for our baseball show debut till then see ya G.